I was Sandy Usher, but Rico from Street Scores, and every week after every game, we're going to look at a lot of the advanced statistics and pro football focus grades from that previous game. We're going to do offense one day and defense and special teams the next. Of course, I'm also working on some film sessions, the All-22. I finally got my hands on it, so I'm going to work on some Jahan Dawson stuff. I want to look at some Derek Forrest stuff, some Gibson, some Curtis Samuel, and maybe even some Jamin Davis. I'm going to try to get all of that done, hopefully, before we move on to this next game and it's time to move on to further film sessions but like i said we're gonna do these pro football focus grades every week as well along with my live streams where i live stream during the games on sunday and then have the post game live stream an hour and a half later where y'all can call in but of course again with the advanced statistics we're gonna look at snap counts we're gonna look at individual grades like for offense it's broken up in the passing grades rushing grades so anybody can be a rusher as long as you ran the ball receiving grades that could be tight ends running backs and receivers for blocking that can also include tight ends running backs as well so we're gonna break it down in those categories and of course we're gonna look at like for offense alignment who was the best pass blocker who was the best run blocker and vice versa who was the worst at any specific thing all of that type of stuff and of course we're going to look at who had the best overall grades on the offense and the team as well but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every friday for the broadcast podcast make sure you pull up every sunday for the during the game live streams i'm sorry i missed last week i was literally in the air on the plane during the first half of that jaguars commanders game literally had to like whatever lt or wi-fi i could get for any moment baggage claim ride home all of that i was watching whatever i could and now i've actually had time over the past couple of days to re-watch the game a couple of times and again of all 22 i finally got my hands on that so a lot of breakdowns and analysis coming soon for that and of course i will also be having the post game live streams every sunday as well where y'all call in and voice your opinions and without further ado Let's get it. All right, let's start with the offense. And as y'all can see, number one, Tony ain't play with it. My boy Armani Rogers, our highest graded offensive player. The only one in the 80s, almost a 90, 89.6. They could have gave my boy that 0.4 points right there. They could have done that, man. They was right there with it. Could have done it. And then you have Antonio Gibson second with a 76.6. Curtis Samuel with a 74.2. Samuel Cosby, 74.1. Charles Leno, 73.7. And everybody else is a 68 or below, as you can currently see. But again, and my boy Armani Rod, I've been telling y'all, man. I I've been telling y'all with three run blocking snaps, he had a 60 run blocking grade, which isn't terrible, but it's also not good. But I'll take it. And then his passing grade is a 90.4. As far as him being like a receiver, technically only had one snap in that category, but he took full advantage of it that one play where it was basically like a screen play designed to him he took it 23 yards man i'm so glad that he's having an early impact on this team he does things that nobody else can do and again he's super raw he just moved from quarterback to tight end for the first time in his life just a few months ago so the sky's the limit i'm telling y'all darren waller potential and you're already getting glimpses of it now granted when cole turn is healthy enough which may be this upcoming game against the lions maybe armani rogers is inactive but i don't know man with the type of explosion that he has and the potential that he has i think we need to find a way to keep him active even if cole turn is healthy but then just to scroll down a little bit further so you can see some more of the grades sadiq charles the lowest chase roulier not far behind him west schweitzer right after that john bates 18th andrew norwell 17th cam sims 16th that's not a good look diami brown 15th not a good look i mean a lot of our offense alignment are the guys that are at the bottom of the list and again since this isn't preseason it's the regular season is not as many names of course but the names that are there we can get far more in depth with them they've had more snaps they've had more opportunities to be graded and analyzed and things like that so i like these stats better less names more stats more accuracy love it also before we move on to the passing grades which is 
only occupied by Carson Wentz, the only one to throw a pass for us. Again, in the preseason, we would have three quarterbacks. Now we only have one. Again, moving to some advanced statistics before we move on to further pro football focus grades, because that may honestly be most of the reason why some of y'all are here, here for the advanced statistics more than the grades. So I wanted to go ahead and knock that out in the beginning of the video rather than holding y'all hostage for the majority of the video waiting for the stats. So as you can see on this picture, when it comes to pass protection, pro football focus loved us. We were top seven in pass protection. But at the same time, according to ESPN, when it comes to win rates, we were like bottom seven. So I think that's a really weird clash right there. Also in week one, the Washington Commanders were number two in ESPN's pass rush win rate at 58%. And we barely blitzed. I mean, we had a couple of blitzes that were really notable, like the Benjamin St. Juice one that forced the grounding penalty against Trevor Lawrence. But for the most part, we were out there just rushing four defensive linemen and we had the second best ESPN pass rush win rate out of the entire NFL without Chase Young and with an injury to Fedarian Mathis. Also, according to advanced statistics, Washington was the seventh best passing team over the weekend. So shouts out to Carson Wentz, Scott Turner, and all of those weapons out there. And the offensive line for giving them enough time to do it. Also, NFL pass rate over expected on first and 10. This graph shows that the commanders are fully trusting Carson Wentz to deliver the ball even on first and 10s. He's going to run the offense. And I felt like, honestly, our offense got way worse when we tried to, you know, we had a 14-3 lead let's not blow the lead let's try to run the ball get conservative no be aggressive every time we were aggressive we were clearly the better team when Carson Wentz was let loose and able to just orchestrate the offense and like this stat is showing right now this graph throwing on first and 10 that's when our offense was at its best we gained a 14 to 3 lead then we were down because we got passive and then when we got back aggressive we went back and gained that lead right back so I love the fact that Scott Turner is showing confidence in Carson Wentz to throw the ball on first and 10 rather than previous years whether it be Scott Turner or Jay Gruden wanting to run the ball on first and 10 to make it easier on the quarterback now we have a veteran quarterback with an arm that we're just going to be like hey man go out there and make a play on first and 10 and give us a beneficial down to go and let's be explosive let's spread the offense out let's get the defense in mismatch situations and let's move the ball let's not play games and just run this 1980s football this is a passing league let's be a passing team also Jahan Dotson is now the newest favorite to win offensive rookie of the year he went from plus 2500 to plus 900 with his two touchdowns and I hate the fact that some people are comparing him to Chris Olave and saying well even though Chris Olave didn't have touchdowns he had one more yard but with Jahan Dotson's touchdowns if they weren't touchdowns he would have more yards I mean once you pass the one yard line that's it even though he caught a touchdown four yards deeper and even his first touchdown he probably could have caught it and ran for 80 yards for a touchdown those don't count so I hate the fact that some people are bringing up like Chris Olave technically have more yards even though John Dotson had more touchdowns because John Dotson technically should have had more yards but again at the most important part and the reason why Vegas feels like John Dotson is your newest favorite to win offensive rookie of the year is those touchdowns and he's going to be used highly in the red zone and I love that and now leaving some of the really interesting advanced statistics going back to the grades again Carson Wentz was our only passer in this game it's not preseason it's a regular season so you know best case scenario Carson Wentz is our only passer all season until like say we're going into week 18 with 12 or 13 wins you know what I'm saying and then we just throw Sam Howell out there so that we just go ahead and rest Carson Wentz as we get ready for the playoffs other than that it should only be one quarterback all season but he had a 68.7 passing grade. He had a 53.6, so they felt like he didn't run really well. And the fumble grades are always in the 80s. That's how it's been in the preseason, so I don't exactly know how they grade that. But it's always been there, so we're going to kind of ignore that. But he had a 67.6 overall grade, and I'm pretty sure a lot of that is from those two bad interceptions. The first one was really his worst one. He just completely stared down the receiver. My Georgia Bulldog, Tyson Campbell, just read it and got an easy interception. I don't even feel like it was necessarily that great of a play. I felt like it was more so just a terrible play by Carson Wentz. And then the other play, the screen to Trevon Walker. I mean, you would like for Charles Leno to just go ahead and cut block Trevon Walker there. You would also like for Carson Wentz to have the awareness not to throw it the way that he did. But a great play by another Georgia Bulldog, Trevon Walker right there. And those are his two interceptions. And that's probably why. And he probably also had some other plays where he left a little bit on the field, maybe inaccurate to a receiver that was open, that it didn't necessarily 
necessarily result in an interception, but it was inaccuracy, which brought his grade down. But then the plays he was on, he was super on. Um, like I already explained before in a live stream and another advanced statistics that I haven't brought up in this video, Carson Wentz had two of the top five most improbable throws out of the entire weekend. Like, out of all of the five most incredible, improbable throws that went down, according to Next Gen Stats, Carson Wentz alone had two of them. So when he was on point, he looked like a top five quarterback at times. But then at times, you were like, how is this guy even in the league with the way he was staring down the receiver, trying to get the ball, and then Tyson Campbell ended up picking it up. Moving on to the receiving grades. Of course, my boy Armani Rodgers is the highest receiving grade on the team. He was the highest offensive grade overall. So, of course, he's the highest receiver. And, I mean, shout out to my boy with a 90 receiving grade almost a 90 overall grade second to him is Antonio Gibson and Curtis Samuels third then you have Jahan Dodson JD McKissick Terry McLaurin Logan Thomas Cam Sims Dax Milne and then John Bates was abysmal I do vividly remember a really bad drop that he had that's probably the most of it but I'm not exactly sure what he's done the rest of the way I'm gonna have to go back and look at the all 22 and really just keep a keen eye on him and see what he did of course his pass blocking was high I'm not surprised about that Logan Thomas Thomas had a higher pass blocking grade than John Bates. I'm a little surprised about that because remember, John Bates was arguably the best pass blocking and run blocking tight end in the NFL last year. And then JD McKissick, 78.5 pass blocking grade. Not surprised there because he's already known as our best pass blocking running back. And the fact that Antonio Gibson has green and at least a little bit of blue across the board is amazing. Like, pass blocking grade, that's the main weakness for him. Fumbling, of course, that's a big weakness, but that's something that's more recent. But since he's touched the NFL, he's had a pass blocking issue. And the fact that he's improved in that mightily is huge. That's going to allow him to be on the field a lot more. I mean, when we drafted Brian Robinson, that's going to eat into Antonio Gibson's carries once Brian Robinson is healthy and able to play. But that also doesn't mean that Antonio Gibson isn't still going to get the ball a lot because he's going to take a lot of targets away from J.D. McKissick and snap away from him especially if he can pass block the reason jd mckissick was out there on third downs a lot not only was his pass catching ability but the fact that he was our best pass blocking running back and if you can keep antonio gibson on the field and not worry about him allowing carson Wentz to get blown up by a blitzer that's gonna allow him to be on the field way more than people think and then of course i mean going back to my boy armani rogers man y'all gotta stop playing with my boy of course curtis samuel balled out in every way but he did have that really crucial fumble jahan dotson his rookie debut you love to see it 68 receiving grade I'm going to have to go look at the tape and, and we're probably going to do a film session on him and find out why it's this low because I felt like in a rookie debut having two touchdowns, your receiving grade should be way higher, especially since as, as much as I love Armani Rodgers, he only had one target, one reception for 23 yards. He has a 90 receiving grade, but Jahan Dotson is out here with 40 yards and two touchdowns, only a 68. So I'm going to have to go look at like maybe the, the times he wasn't targeted, maybe he wasn't able to get open against coverage and things like that or... You know, he was targeted five times and was only able to catch three out of the five. Maybe that's a reason. Who knows? I'm going to have to go really look at it. But yards per reception, Terry McLaurin led the team with that one deep bomb. And then he also had that short catch that he had that wasn't this. That was more so of like almost like an extension of the run game, kind of. And those were his only two technically catches. But that deep bomb was amazing. That was Carson Wentz's best throw, in my opinion. That was something that no quarterback has been able to do here for the breaking of gold in a lot of years i mean we could say kirk cousins but kirk cousins you know he was a stat stuffer wasn't necessarily a winner and he was reluctant to throw the deep ball a lot of the times jay gruden wanted them too and he was like no i want to be risk adverse so i can get this next big contract i don't want to throw a whole bunch of interceptions trying to throw this deep ball that you want me to and then end up not getting as much money as i'm supposed to and it worked out he got huge money for the vikings so his strategy ended up working out very well for him but he was very risk averse whereas Carson Wentz is going to first of all attempt that throw to Terry McLaurin also complete it those are both huge because again we haven't been able to even find a quarterback that will be willing to attempt that throw to Terry McLaurin these past few years arguably more than that maybe over 10 and with Armani Rogers only having one target on one reception I'm not exactly sure why his drop grade is a 64.7 but who knows man and of course John Bates has the worst drop grade and the worst grade overall because of that one really bad drop 
he had where i mean he easily should have caught that and just completely dropped it for no reason then moving on to the rushers again anybody that runs with the ball is a rusher so it's not just running backs you have john dotson the receiver curtis samuel the receiver and also carson wentz the quarterback and without brian robinson healthy and available and then jonathan williams was not giving the ball at all i'm not even sure if he was active so our only running backs were technically jd mckissick and antonio gibson and kind of technically curtis samuel because curtis samuel had four rushing attempts for 17 yards 4.3 yards per carry they gave him a low rushing grade which i'm a little surprised about but i do feel like a lot of his best runs were technically after the catch past the line of scrimmage rather than getting the ball in the backfield and making something shake even though he did have one impressive run from the backfield that i I felt that he had but Antonio Gibson was great he had 14 rushing attempts 58 yards that's not excellent but 4.1 yards per attempt is not bad and of course didn't fumble that's the biggest thing JD McKissick three rushing attempts eight yards Jahan Dotson that one rushing attempt for negative 10 yards wasn't necessarily his fault that was just really good defense from the Jaguars they were completely they were clearly aware of it. I believe it was Devin Lloyd that completely just read the play and destroyed it. If it weren't for him, I believe it was Devin Lloyd. Maybe Jahan Dotson takes it for way more than even past the line of scrimmage, but it resulted in negative 10 because the Jaguars were ready. And then Carson Wentz technically only had three attempts for 12 yards. And all of his runs were on scrambles. None of them were designed runs. They were all scrambles. So looking around the field nothing's open taking off for a little bit they felt like he didn't deserve a really good run grade for those runs though so maybe they felt like a receiver was open he shouldn't have taken off at all or anything but hey i'll take the little bit of yards you can get when you can get it if nothing's open i'm about to look at the all 22 to truly see if nothing was open but from the, what i saw live i liked what i saw from those couple of runs that he had those couple of scrambles just pick up whatever you can in that play oh and before we move on from that i felt like this is very important i can't believe i almost forgot this curtis samuel played almost 70 percent of his snaps in the slot john dotson only played 27 percent of his snaps in the slot so he was mostly an outside receiver so that again like we saw in the preseason, John Dotson's mostly on the outside. Curtis Samuel's mostly in the slot, but Curtis Samuel's also going to be used out of the backfield as well. I also think it's interesting that Logan Thomas was in the slot 64.7% of his snaps. Rather than being just like a straight up inline tight end, more so like a John Bates who was only in the slot 46.2% of the time, Logan Thomas was definitely more of a receiver than a John Bates. And Armani Rogers was technically never in the slot, which I find very interesting as well. JD McKissick was in the slot twice i think that's really interesting the fact that he was basically a receiver we also had some formations where it was two receivers in the backfield with carson wentz i love that as well terry mclaurin was primarily outside which you expect only in the slot 20.4 percent of the time cam sims was never in the slot which is expected dax Milne did most of his work in the slot even though he was only out there for three snaps he was in the slot two of them and then lastly get into these blocking grades all right so our best overall grades out of all of our offense alignment are samuel cosme Charles Leno and then you got to skip quite a few players to get the Trey Turner with 62.7 Cornelius Lucas with a 60 and Andrew Norwell with a 53.6 Wes Swicer with a 51.2 Chase Roulier with 48.7 and Sadiq Charles with a 31.2 our best pass blockers were apparently Charles Leno Andrew Norwell Logan Thomas JD McKissick Antonio Gibson John Bates and Samuel Cosme Trey Turner, Chase Rillier, Wes Schweitzer, and Sadiq Charles apparently struggled in pass blocking snaps. And then run blocking snaps, you had tight end Logan Thomas, Dax Milne, but we're trying to focus on the offensive lineman, Samuel Cosme. Then you have Trey Turner, 66.9. Then you have Wes Schweitzer with a 59.5. I'm surprised, man. I love Wes Schweitzer, and I love what I've seen from him in previous years here. I'm about to go back and look at the All-22 to really see if he was just truly this bad against the Jaguars because I just refuse to believe it. But, hey, it is what it is. Then you have Cornelius Lucas. But apparently Samuel Cosme was our best run blocking offense alignment of the day and Charles Leno was our best pass blocking offense alignment of the day with Andrew Norwell not far behind him with an 89.2 so that's good to hear man I mean those grades aren't great but that's something to build on and now looking at pressures allowed Samuel Cosme allowed a sack I do remember him getting beat bad by my Georgia Bulldog Trevon Walker one play but I feel like he did a pretty good job outside of that Trey Turner allowed a QB hit and a hurry which is a total of two pressures Chase really allowed one hurry for one total pressure Wes Schweitzer allowed one hit and Sadiq Charles allowed one hurry 
Outside of that, no other pressures allowed from this offensive line, which isn't bad. That that's not great, but that's but that's also not bad, and I'll take it. Also, can't necessarily see it on the screen right now, but even before we move on, Andrew Norwell was the only offensive lineman with penalties. He had two. All of them were illegal hands to the face, which I felt was interesting. I'm not mad at those. I love a nasty, mean, aggressive, physical offensive lineman. You need to tone it down a little bit to avoid these penalties, but I'm never too mad at that. But again, you can't necessarily see it on the screen. Charles Leno played almost all of his snaps at left tackle. He played 76 at left tackle, but one at right tackle, which I felt was really interesting. Andrew Noel was at left guard, 74 snaps. Logan Thomas played inline tight end, 15 snaps. John Bates played in inline tight end, 24 snaps. Then you have Samuel Cosme, who played right tackle, 76 snaps, but technically was an inline tight end once. Then you had Trey Turner, who played right guard, 52 snaps. Wes Schweitzer also stepped in to play some right guard for 20 snaps. So that just lets you see what kind of happened as far as injuries go. Because Sadiq Charles also stepped in and played five snaps at right guard and three snaps at left guard. And Chase Roulier held it down, played all of the center snaps that were possible. And technically, according to Pro Football Focus, John Bates played one snap at left tackle on one play where Charles Leno went to go play one snap at right tackle. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look at the film to review that to see exactly what's going on there. But that's how they felt that went down. And also, my boy Armani Rogers played four snaps as an inline tight end, which is very encouraging because with him being like a Darren Waller potential type of guy that I see him as the fact that he can contribute as an inline tight end when necessary and has the potential to be a good blocker that's going to be huge man that's going to be the main reason that he's able to stay on the field his blocking his receiving potential is undeniable but if he can stay on the field as an inline tight end that can contribute as a blocker and at the very least get in people's way and not be as bad as John Bates and Jordan Reed used to be as far as blocking goes for us but also that can be able to contribute in the passing game the same way as those two did that's going to be huge but yeah man that's the end of this video that's all of the advanced statistics and pro football focus grades i have for the offense again we will do the defense and special teams in the same video the day afterwards so be on the lookout for that as well and please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video let me know your opinions on the grades on the advanced statistics and also let me know if you want me to continue this series and of course man i appreciate all of the support man please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learn anything shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now i'll catch y'all later i'm out